Well, hey, y'all. Hey, welcome back. It's lunchtime. I just wanted to check in with you guys. I don't know about you guys, but I'm like, are they going to make give us the verdict today? I am so rooting for Jonathan Majors. I am so rooting for him. Uh, welcome back, my view, my opinion, the MVMO podcast. I'm your host. I just want to chat and talk. I've read some of your comments from our last conversation, which was yesterday, uh, Thursday, December 14th. And we were talking about everything that had happened since the text messages were released, which was a separate event. Okay. Um, so I, I want to kind of address a few things that I saw some of you saying. Um, what we clearly know here is that Jonathan Majors and Grace Jabari on that night, March 25th, he is innocent of every single thing. Every single thing she said he did was a flat out lie. We know that the driver of the SUV confirmed, you know, remember the judge told him, you can only testify to what you saw. And he said, well, my face was, you know, going, you know, I was looking forward. But from what I heard, she hit him first. She was the aggressor and he was trying to get away from her. And well, the video corroborates that. We see this guy not walking away from Grace Javari. He was running full speed. I mean, he was on track, <laughs> track. He was doing track. And guess what? She just was chasing him around the corner, around the corner. Um, so, of course, someone trying to get away from you. Um, is not someone who's who's abusing you. This is someone who's trying to keep this from escalating any more than it has. So we know that when t- in terms of March 25th, as I said yesterday, he is he is uh, innocent. There's he didn't do anything wrong. How she got a fracture finger, we don't know because the doctor testified Fra- that fracture is not is it could not have happened from someone twisting your arm or twisting your finger. It's not even consistent with someone falling. So again, we don't know what this girl did from the time she left that club, from the time she went to that apartment and took her sleeping pill. Right. Um, and, and then there's so much other evidence, of course, that they presented. Um, but I will say this. Um, some of you were asking me, why did I kept keep saying he's innocent? He obviously did not do any of the things he was accused of that night. But why did I keep bringing up he has a character problem? And so I want to address that now. Well, here's the deal. The trial was supposed to be only about that night, right? But you understand that that's just not how court cases are going to go. Uh, her team were trying to prove, well, the re- she didn't lie to the police or the hospital staff. She, she was just so fearful of him because, of, see, this is all the stuff that happened before that made her fearful. And so, you know, that's why, you know, you know so, it, you know, lawyers have to do their job. You know, they have to do their job. Well, based on those text messages from last year, which have nothing to do with this incident, right? We all know that. You can definitely see that these two people had a very toxic codependent relationship. I mean, you think about the text messages, messages of him threatening to kill himself. Okay. You, you, you know, so it definitely shows that no, he's not violent towards her physically, but he has some character problems, you know, manipulating somebody. You know, and she was manipulative too. again, as I said last night, y'all, this was a this was two people who were drawn together by their mutual um, dysfunction. And it was two years of hell. (laughs) And from what she said, girl, they were talking about having kids and getting married. So, again, I, I want you guys to look at the overarching theme here. A man who's healthy, a man who is emotionally healthy. Now, I'm not talking about mentally ill. I'm just talking about emotionally healthy, meaning he's healed of whatever happened in his childhood. He's healed of whatever. He knows how to manage his emotions. He knows he's able to distinguish a healthy relationship from an unhealthy one. A man who was in that kind of a state would never be with somebody like that. And let's just say the girl was really, really a good actress. And so she could fool him for a few months when he did see the craziness, when he did see the alcoholism, when he did see that I'm going to always play the victim, he would have gotten up out of there. He wouldn't have moved her into his apartment. So all of those things speak to a man who has some issues. Violence? No. Character issues? Yes. Yes. So I still say I, I, I hope. Um, that he can make it out of this. And I think based on the evidence, if the jury, if, if the jury just focuses on March 25th, he's free because he didn't do nothing. 
I mean, he didn't do nothing. This girl is psycho. Okay. She's psycho. She's a psycho ac- alcoholic, you know, the, and probably a pill popper too. And golly knows what else. And what, didn't the video in the club, y'all, show her hugged all up on a woman? So I'm like, okay, what kind of, what kind of woman is this? Okay. Well, what, what were you doing, Jonathan? Who were you really with? Okay. So yeah, but yeah, he definitely has some character problems, but aren't we all working on our character? But see, the difference between us and him is that he's in the limelight. So, you know, you, you can't just be, you know, you can't just be all out of here. You gotta, you gotta make sure you're on the up and up, especially the, the higher your star is rising. I want to play a clip for you guys of something that I think applies here. Take a listen. Denzel said to me a few minutes ago, he said, at your highest moment, be careful. That's when the devil comes for you. Remember what Denzel said to him? Be careful in your highest moment. That's when the devil comes for you. Now, let's talk a little bit about that as we're waiting on the jury. We all know uh, something that Jesus taught that I want to talk about here. He said, the enemy comes to me and he finds nothing in me. So he can't, you know, you know, I'm not going to be committing any sins because there's nothing in me. So the devil can't find anything in me. So he's going to have to, of course, find something outside of me. In essence, I'm kind of adding more to his words, explaining it a little bit more. But my point is, is. Be careful in your highest moment. That's when the devil comes for you. Well, there's only two options the devil has. He can use a problem we already have that we haven't fixed, like a character issue or whatever, or he can use somebody or it could be both. And see, in this case, in my view, my opinion, it's both. He was at his highest moment thus far because, I mean, he's very young and so he has a long way to go. But at his highest moment thus far. And look at what happened. Had he never, if he were a healthy man, see, remember the inside that he finds nothing in me. If had he been a healthy man, he would have never been with a grace Jabari. Therefore, the enemy could have never used a grace Jabari to lie on you and, and use that old racist trope. I'm so afraid of him. You know, the, the, the shaking, frail, pale white girl. I'm so afraid of him. This big black dude. Oh, my God. You know. See, none of that could have happened. So what all of our jobs are is to eliminate the things the enemy can use to try to totally destroy our rising in life. So what did I say last night? Work on the inside. When we talked about that, people who spend $500 uh, on rims, but you know, they won't spend $500 on therapy because see, they don't really see the inside as important as the outside. But the, the most important is the inside because it's the inside that really determines what's going on on the outside in terms of relationships, business, personal, romantic, all of that. So Jonathan, hopefully, needs to learn from this because I think he's going to make it. I think he's going to beat this case because he's innocent, but he's got some issues. And if he doesn't work on them, I'm, I can tell you what's going to happen after this. Now, when it's going to happen is what I can't tell you, but I can tell you what's going to happen. Can I tell you that? Cause I have a crystal ball. No, because a lot of us have lived a good number of years and we've observed some of the cycles of life. And so he ain't remember. We say, I'll, I always say this. We're not special, baby. There ain't nothing new under the sun that we ain't special. Okay. So if he makes it out of this, if he doesn't fix his problem the next time, it's going to be worse. Somebody's going to get him on camera doing, doing or saying something, having a vicious, a, a horrendous, outrageous fit of anger where he's throwing stuff around or hitting somebody. And see, at that point, it's going to be really over. Thank God for those cameras, you know, you know, we, we talk a lot here about we're in the surveillance era, you know, where we're surveillance everywhere we go. The red light cameras, everywhere you go, there are cameras. I remember Babe said to me, this was a long, long time ago. He said, just pay attention to everywhere you go, where, how many cameras there are. Look up, look around, you know. 
when you're at the park, because I like to go to the park walking. You know, I, I, was, I don't see any cameras. They're, they're, on, they're not on eye level, but look up. They're in the trees, right? And some of them are on eye level. But, but the point being, we're in the surveillance era. And so it's good in a way because it's going to help a lot of us as black folks. I mean, think about George Floyd. Had it not been for someone's cell phone, him having us walking around with a video camera in our hands, to be able to capture that, that guy would have lied again. Just like he stepped on, he tried to, uh, he kneeled on a 17 year old's neck. The mother came out later and said that her child didn't die, but was, was uh, almost injured really badly. He had done it before and gotten away with it. But this time he just didn't, he was so, the evil was so in him. Let's put it that way to be nice Mm -hmm. without saying too much here. That he he thought he'd get away with it right in front of a camera because, well, he's white and this is a black man. You know, so we just have to understand that when we have problems. That inside stuff that the enemy can use and we don't fix those, it's going to come back to bite us again and again and again. And so what I really hope I'm going to repeat this from last night is that when he gets off. He goes away somewhere. So you can't just get off and then go back to work. No, you got to process all this that happened to you. You got to sit down somewhere with pen and paper in a quiet place. And you got to process. You got to cry. You got to get it out. You got to get the rage out. Because when you're mistreated and someone lies on you, that makes us, we have a righteous indignation there. And see, all those emotions need to be expressed in a healthy way. And he needs to get in nature and just woosah and get come back to self and center and work out a plan of healing for himself so that never again in his highest moment can the enemy come for him. Oh, the enemy can try, but only from the outside, but it can't be from the inside. Now, I also had said to you guys on a different uh, podcast, Megan uh, Good needs to run. I still believe that. He is not healthy right now. He's, he's handsome. He's fine. He's talented, amazingly talented. If he makes it out of this, he has a bright future because I do believe something that I wanted to add to my commentary. If he makes it off, if he gets off, right, because he is innocent, but we know, um, hey, think about the makeup of that jury. We can't forget we are still in America, y'all. And in the face of all evidence, we can still be found guilty. But if he makes it, if he is found um, not guilty, what would revive his career is if Marvel doesn't drop him. If they remove him as Kang the Conqueror or whatever else they were doing, that that's going to be it. He needs a powerful media con- uh, conglomerate like that to stand behind him and not pull back the pull his him from that project. That will then, I think, um, give, I don't know if courage would be the word, but that would help these other media outlets say, okay, they're not pulling him. But then you got to think of it. He plays the villain in those. (laughs) So maybe they can use it as a brand. I don't know. Maybe they can come up some creative thing to do. But I think he has to think about that too. You got to think about what is your brand going to be going forward? This girl tried to brand you as an abusive man a violent man, a violent black man, an abusive black man, you know, now are you going to continue to play roles where you're, you're the villain? So you got to think about all that stuff. You know what I really wish he had? I really wish he had in the business, like a Sidney Portier, um, to advise him, you know, Sidney came up at a time when, uh, a di- very different time than Jonathan. But even though the times are very different when it comes to the heart of certain people. And I think, Those of us in the audience who are black, you know what I mean by that. That hasn't changed. Um, I don't know if a Denzel can become a mentor. He needs somebody in this business, uh, an elder statesman black man in this business, several of them who can rally around him and say, "Okay, little brother, we're going to have to teach you some things. Not just about dealing with these kind of women and what can happen to you when you do, but also, you know, about how you're going to have to maneuver in this business, you know. And so there you have it, guys. Um, We're all waiting. Maybe by the time this is up, the verdict will be out. 
Um, what I hope happens, though, is that he doesn't give a speech in front of the courthouse. Just let your attorney speak. You've been silent this far. Keep it silent. OK, guys, I'll talk to you later.